All right then, so we've made our connection to the database now. How about we try to actually retrieve some data from it? So we do that by issuing SQL or SQL commands or otherwise called queries, okay? Now there's three steps to making these queries, sending them and getting the data. And I basically just said them. First of all, we construct the query, okay? Then we make the query and then we fetch the results from that query. So they're the three steps that we need to perform. So first of all, let's actually write the query to get all the pizzas. So let's do a little comment right here and I'm gonna say write query for all pizzas. Okay, so I'm gonna store this query that we construct in a variable and I'm gonna call it SQL or SQL. And we're gonna set that equal to a string and this is where we're gonna write our SQL. Now you may have seen this before, it's a lot of capital letters with different commands. So what we're gonna do is use the select command right there and that is select data, that's what it means. Go and get data. Now I'm gonna use this star, in fact what I'm gonna do is write this out and then I'll explain it. So select star from pizzas like so, okay? Now what does this all mean? Well select we've already said means Go and get, select the data, okay? So that's how we go and get data. This star means I want all of the columns from the table we're about to get data from. So say for example, each of our records has five columns, right? It has an ID, it has a title, it has the ingredients, an email, and a created out, all five columns. And I want all of those five columns of data when we go to get the data, all right? That's what this means, the star. This from means where we're getting it from, the data, and this pizzas is the name of our database. We call that pizzas, remember, not the database, sorry, the table. The database name is Ninja Pizza. The table inside that database is pizzas. So that's where we're selecting the data from. So this would go ahead and select it all. I don't want it all, I just want certain columns. So the way we do that is write out the columns that we actually want. I want the title, the ingredients and the ID because we're going to use that in the future. They're the only three columns that I need right now, okay? Right, so the next step is to actually make the query and get the result. So we'll say make query and get result, okay? So the way we do this is by creating a variable called result and set that equal to mysql i underscore query because we're making the query right now we use the connection variable. This is our connection to the database. So this is the information or the reference it's gonna to use to go out and get the data. Let's spell this correctly. It's my. And then the second parameter or the second argument we need to pass through is the actual stuff that we want to issue, the command, the SQL. So let's pass that in right there like so. So that then my friends is gonna actually make the query to the database and get us some kind of result right there, all right? Now, that result isn't just an array of uh, pizzas or anything like that, an array of records. We actually have to get from that result the array that we want. And this is the third step. So we need to fetch the resulting rows. Remember, each row is basically a record in a table as an array. So that's the next step. Okay, because they're not automatically in array format here or anything like that. We need to actually get these pizzas as an array of different records or different rows. So I'm gonna store this in a pizzas variable and set that equal to my SQL I and then underscore fetch underscore all because we want all of them. And we're gonna fetch them from the result that we just got from making this query right here. That's where we're fetching them from and then we want to return it as a mysql i underscore associ like that and that returns it as an associative array for us okay so we'll see that in a minute because i'm going to print it out in fact what i'll do is i'll print this out first so we'll say print underscore r and then we're going to print out the pizzas okay so just quickly again what have we done one second well first of all we've connected to the database, then we've constructed this query string using select and from to say where it's from as well. Then we've got this variable called result where we store this query that we're making, 
v at this connection so we know where we're connecting to what database and we're issuing this command this sql command right here that we constructed that should get us this data right here from this table okay now this result it's not in a format that we can use what we need to do is fetch the data from that result in a format that we're going to use which is what we're doing here using this function we're passing in that result that we got from the query and we're saying we want it back as an associative array then we're printing that array to the browser so let me see if this works save that and refresh over here and now we can see we have this array okay so we can see now at position zero we have an array and in there we have a title which is ninja supreme ingredients the tomato so these are associative arrays right these things right here for each pizza we have an associative array and that's good because now we can cycle through those at some point and output them to the dom to the browser in the template down here we're not going to do that just yet we'll do that in another video probably the next one to be honest but for now what i'd like to do is one more thing so typically after we've done our query we should first of all free the result from memory this is good practice we don't have to do this but it's good practice we don't need this anymore so we could free it from memory okay so we can say my sql i underscore free underscore result and then in brackets pass in the result okay so that's the first step the next step is to close the connection to the database so we're going to do that next and i'm just going to say my sql i underscore close to do this and we pass in the connection so that's the connection that we're closing right there so we're freeing the result from memory so let me just put a comment above that free result from memory so we don't need to hang on to that anymore and then we're closing the connection okay so that's all there is to it we're writing the sql issuing the command getting the data in a format that we can use then we're freeing this result from memory because we don't need that anymore then we're closing the connection and at the end of it all we have this pizzas array now we have the data we need and we can go ahead in the next video and start to output that in the html template